The sound of your radio station is partly a matter of taste, with a goal of providing a satisfying listening experience to those you're talking with. Your sound also needs to be clean in order to comply with technical standards and to have the audio level limited to protect your transmitter from potential overmodulation damage. Speech processors for use in radio contests typically sounded narrow and distorted to cover loud, repetitive bursts of frantic chanting associated with that activity. Other radio hobbyists who prefer a relaxed, fully modulated sound quality found sophisticated units that had come out of broadcast service. They also came from professional sound reinforcement. Audio processors like these are more capable than crude speech processors at delivering satisfying audio, since they're designed to adjust the dynamic range of both music and voice for pleasant listening over extended periods of time. But these audio processors, and newer ones today on the market, can cost thousands of dollars and are way overqualified for the talk radio programming of licensed radio hobbyists. Two of those hobbyists recently developed a lower-cost unit designed for amateur radio and unlicensed, low-power AM broadcasting. Rick, W8KHK, and Clark, N1BCG, have sent around a few factory-built prototype examples of this model for demonstration and review. I guess just about everybody's familiar with how large a Sharpie pen is, so we'll put that on there for scale. This is sitting on top of a UPS that normally would generate some hum in lesser circuits that are not shielded or what have you, and it's dead quiet, sitting right on top of the thing. So I came over to the workshop for a minute because there are a lot of switches on this thing. I started reading through the technical documentation, and there's a lot of it. And frankly, it's a lot easier just to switch the stuff and see what it sounds like. The passband on this particular unit is set for 4, 5, and 7 KC. Let's take a listen to what it sounds like. So we're going to take this through its settings and what they sound like. The Max Audio Processor, in this instance, is directly connected to the camera so that you don't hear the vagarities of the transmitter and you don't hear the effect of the receiver after listening to the transmitter signal coming through the airwaves. And then we'll switch it to medium. There's only a little bit more high end that comes through when you do that. But when you switch it to wide, you can start to hear all the sizzle come through. You can see my teeth, as they say. You can see me smile. And if you further adjust the pre-emphasis switch, that's like a treble boost. It can sound kind of shrill into a local camera like this, but what it winds up doing is compensates for receivers that have inadequate passband or those little desktop speakers that are only four inches around and don't have any high end to begin with. So that can really help your audio quality to have the pre-emphasis turned on. During my test drive, I worked a station who was listening on a fairly narrow Holocrafters receiver as I transmitted with an audio profile that sounded like this. If I remember correctly, the HQ-170 is not the most generous when it comes to passband. But that's an important test for this box as well because people who listen on narrower passband receivers also need to have clarity which is why the pre-emphasis function of this box is important, where it kicks up the treble right in that 4KC area to help overcome the roll-off of the receiver or the loudspeaker that's on the desk. Among other features, the Max has a choice of dynamic range. The switch marked density. Open is good for easy listening. Dense might be good against static or weak signals, but it grew tiresome when conditions are good as I found out soon in my trial run. This is the uh, the Clark and Rick processor, uh, N1BCG and W8KHK have loaned me a, uh, an advanced prototype example to write some reviews and it's driving the senior se super senior to its uh, maximum compression capability. I'm giving it an acid test. K1ETP in the group WA3VJB. Yeah, WA3BJB in the group K1ETP. Yeah, it sounds quite compressed, Paul. In fact, I'm hearing you, you, you take every breath <laughs> that you take. It's, you know, your breaths are as loud as your, uh, as your, uh, as your words. So maybe a little too much compression? I don't know. Once I learned the functions and settings, the processor worked well. I also have settled on the, uh, middle of three degrees of compression. The least compression wasn't very effective. The most compression started sounding fatiguing to more than one person at the other end. 
So this is the Goldilocks setting as far as compression is concerned. I don't think I would be constantly adjusting things from then on, which makes me wonder how many of these front panel controls could be moved inside. You can switch between a mic input and a line level input, so you can leave more than one source connected and ready to select. And there are two outputs that are both on and separately adjustable for level. This can be good in multiple transmitter installations, or if you want to use one of the outputs as a headphone monitor. When it comes to the unit's primary job of tailoring dynamic range, controlling audio peaks, and putting across a satisfying tonal quality, this unit comes pretty close to broadcast audio processors costing much more. There are a few things to keep in mind about the Max audio processor. Many stations use equalization to fine-tune their audio curve, not included on this model. There's room to improve the names and functions of switches, pots, and indicators. The earliest models are sold as kits, with no factory wired units planned. The design continues to evolve. We've already heard about corrections, improvements, and additional features. Thanks for the test drive, and thank you to the stations I worked who provided some feedback while I had the Max Audio processor at my station. I've received no compensation nor promotional consideration for this review. WA3VJB out of here for now.